In most of Eurasia, they vanished by 250,000 to 300,000 years ago. But in Africa and South Asia, Acheulean tools persisted long enough to overlap with early Homo sapiens. The youngest Acheulean tools are in West Africa and India, dated to 120,000 years ago. And a new find in Arabia is dated to 200,000 to 250,000 years. New discoveries at sites such as Safaka and Dawadmi in central Saudi Arabia are forcing a shift in how we think about these stone scatters on the desert plains. Rather than the work of lazy Homo erectus, they may represent something far more poignant, the final survival of Heidelbergensis-like humans, robust and intelligent archaic people who cut off from the technological revolution stirring elsewhere, endured in Arabia until around 200,000 years ago. These Akulian people may have even been archaic Homo sapiens, like the Jebel Irhud people from Morocco, who lived 300,000 years ago, depending on your school of thought on the evolution of modern humans. In either case, they were among the last archaic humans on Earth, clinging to river valleys and lake shores during rare, humid phases, and then fading into obscurity as the deserts closed in. Today, Central Arabia is a landscape of aridity, endless gravel plains, searing dunes and dry wadis that rarely see water. To imagine archaic humans living here requires a leap of imagination. Yet climate records from cave speleothems, lake cores and marine sediments tell us that Arabia was repeatedly transformed during the Middle Pleistocene. During interglacial periods, the northward push of the African monsoon drenched the peninsula. Rivers flowed across the Najid Plateau. Lakes pooled in basins that are now bone-dry depressions. Grasslands stretched where only sand exists today, drawing herds of elephants, hippos and antelope north from Africa. For hominins, these green windows were invitations to move, explore and settle. It was in such periods that archaic humans entered Central Arabia. They did not arrive empty-handed. They brought with them the Aculean toolkit, bifacial hand axes, cleavers and flakes, honed over more than a million years of tradition. At Safaka, archaeologists have uncovered a vast scatter of Aculean artifacts spread across ancient river gravels. The scale is breathtaking. Tens of thousands of bifaces and flakes worked from massive andesite blocks that outcrop nearby. The river system that once flowed here has long since vanished, but its cobbles provided the raw material for one of the last great Aculean workshops. The stone tools are not the crude proto-hand axes of early Homo erectus. They are well-shaped, symmetrical, elongated, evidence of skilled craftsmanship. Yet they also reveal a pattern that archaeologists call least cost gathering. The toolmakers rarely carried heavy stone far. Instead, they harvested the nearest raw blocks and shaped them on the spot. In the desert world we see today, that looks like desperation as if every step with a heavy cobble was a risk. But in a humid Arabia with rivers flowing and animals abundant, it may have been simple pragmatism. Why carry stone miles when good material was at hand? The result was a landscape littered with bifaces, testament to repeated visits and intensive occupation. The identity of the Safaka toolmakers has long been a matter of debate. When first reported, they were attributed to late Homo erectus. After all, Achillean and erectus are almost synonymous in the textbooks. But the dates from calcrete crusts, older than 200,000 years, put the site remarkably late in the Achillean story. By that time, in Africa, Achillean had already given way to the Middle Stone Age associated with early Homo sapiens. In Europe, Neanderthal ancestors were moving into the Musterian, the Arabian Aculean stands out as an anachronism, and anachronisms often signal isolation. More likely than late Erectus, the Arabian populations were Heidelbergensis-like humans, robust, large-brained, archaic people whose relatives in Africa are represented by fossils like Bodo and Kabwe, and in Europe by Petrolona. These were no sluggish leftovers. They had cranial capacities overlapping with modern humans, strong builds, and complex social lives. They hunted large animals, butchered carcasses with precision, and mastered the hand-axe tradition at its height. 
If Arabia's Aculean sites represent their outposts, then the peninsula was one of the last refuges of these humans, cut off from the innovations transforming their cousins elsewhere. Why did these populations linger in Arabia, far from the centres of innovation? The answer lies partly in climate and partly in geography. Arabia is a peninsula of extremes. During humid phases, it opens like a green gateway, inviting dispersal north from Africa. But when aridity returns, it becomes a trap. Rivers vanish, lakes evaporate, and populations are squeezed into shrinking refuges around the last patches of fresh water. For Acholian-making Heidelbergensis groups, Arabia may have been both haven and prison. They arrived during favourable times, flourished briefly, but as climates shifted, they were pushed into marginal zones. Unlike early Homo sapiens, who would later exploit coastlines and invent new technologies to survive droughts, these archaic populations lacked the adaptability to ride out the swings. By 200,000 years ago, they were gone. Everywhere we look, the Aculean tradition was fading, and with it the populations who had carried it for more than a million years. Arabia is simply one of the last places where they held on. The Acheulean toolkit can appear monotonous, hand axe after hand axe, biface after biface. Yet that uniformity is itself a clue to the mental world of these archaic humans. The hand axe was not just a tool, it was a tradition, a cultural inheritance passed down through countless generations. At Safakar and Dawadmi, the endless scatter of bifaces suggests not laziness, but commitment to a way of life. Each biface was a multi-purpose implement, a butchering knife, a woodworking adz, a digging pick. In a humid Arabia with rivers teeming with game, these were the perfect tools. The very conservatism of Aculean technology may have been a survival strategy. Why change what worked? But conservatism has costs. When climates shifted and resources grew patchier, when other human groups experimented with lighter, more portable toolkits and ranged farther, the Aculean makers of Arabia had no equivalent flexibility. What would a person from Safaka have looked like? Imagine a figure as tall as a modern human, but more robust, with a heavy brow ridge shading deep-set eyes. The forehead slopes back, the face projects slightly forward, and the jaw is strong. Yet the brain volume is large, comparable to ours. This was no lumbering brute. These people lived in social groups, taught one another to shape stone, butchered elephants and hippos, and carried the Aculean craft across continents. Their disappearance was not due to stupidity, but to the relentless tide of climate and competition. Standing today at Safaka, amid the shimmering heat of Central Arabia, it is difficult to imagine the green landscape that once drew archaic humans here. The wadis are dry, the plains barren, yet the ground still glitters with stone tools. Pick up a hand axe, and you can feel the balance, the intent of a craftsman who lived two hundred millennia ago. These artifacts are not the remnants of laziness. They are the fingerprints of survival, the tools of a population that held on in Arabia long after others had moved on. They are reminders that human evolution is not a single straight path toward progress, but a braided stream of experiments, adaptations, and dead ends. By 200,000 years ago, Arabia's Acheulean was finished. The rivers dried, the lakes vanished, and the last archaic humans who carried the hand axe tradition disappeared with them. In their place, new waves of humans arrived, Neanderthals to the north, early Homo sapiens to the south, bringing fresh technologies and new ways of life. Yet for a brief time, Arabia was the stage for one of the last chapters of the Aculean story. The Handax people here were not the tired remnants of Homo erectus, but Heidelbergensis-like survivors, pushed to the margins but enduring against the odds. They were among the last archaic humans on earth, holding out in a green Arabia before the deserts reclaimed the land. Not long ago, the prevailing view of the Atulian Handax sites in Arabia was dismissive. The story went that Homo erectus, that long-enduring pioneer of the human line, wandered into the peninsula during a green interval, chipped out a few crude bifaces, and then disappeared. These were seen as the last gasp of an exhausted species, a lingering echo of a once world-shaping tradition. 
To view the Safaka and Dawadmi hand axes as products of lazy Homo erectus is to miss their significance. These artifacts speak of resilience, persistence, and adaptation in a challenging environment. They remind us that survival is not always about innovation or expansion. Sometimes it is about holding on, making do with what is at hand, and enduring until the world changes beyond recognition. Thank you for watching.